The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw the two boots, boats there alongside the lake, and the fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and lower, for your, lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knee knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. I have to confess that there have been some times in my life when I wasn't sure if I could trust Jesus. I don't think that ever happened to anybody here, did it? And so here's Jesus asking Simon to trust him. Jesus asks for your trust. Do you trust him? Saint Faustina had a revelation from God. He appeared to her, spoke to her. And it was from those visions that she would coin the phrase that is on the, the poster, the painting over on, would be your right. Jesus, I trust in you. One of the things in her diary that she records that God said to her was this. I desire to give myself to, my, to souls, to fill them with my love. But few there are who want to accept the grace my love intended for them. It's because we don't trust. Skeptical. Indecisive at times. But few there are who want to accept the grace of my love that is intended for them. We must be part of that few. Jesus is asking Simon, do you trust me? Jesus is asking you today, do you trust me? And so Jesus saw two boats there alongside of the lake. Getting into one of the boats belonging to Simon. Jesus gets right into the stuff of Simon's life. He mixes himself up with his profession now and his comrades getting his hands dirty with them. It's been a hard day at the office for poor Simon and his crew. 
They've not caught anything all night. Now Jesus gets in the boat and he says, do you trust me? Do you trust me, Simon, with your livelihood? Do you trust me with this boat? Then put into deep water, lower your nets for a catch. Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. What's not said is probably Peter or Simon mumbling under his breath, give me a break. Every fisherman at the lake of Genesaret knows that the best fishing is done at night, and here you are in broad daylight, really? Besides, you're a carpenter. What do you know about fishing? Simon, do you trust my wisdom? Oops. The eyes of the world. To the eyes of the world, God's counsel seems ridiculous and restrictive. To tell you the truth, I find the ungodly counsel more restrictive and ridiculous. But the eyes of the world look at faith and see it as ridiculous and restrictive. Before Adam had sinned, Adam himself trusted God with everything, like you would trust a kind father to whom you go to for counsel in everything. And that's what Adam did. He consulted with his heavenly father for everything. Today, we see the fruit of not trusting in God's word and taking more stock in the world that is of a culture that's going astray and more stock in our own opinions over God's wisdom. Now we can say, yes, Jesus, I want to trust you. Maybe I'm not there yet, but I'd like to. I want. Okay, Simon says, at your command, I'll lower the nets. Simon takes a first step in what we call the obedience of faith. God asks of it, and we do it. This is not blind faith. This is the obedience of faith that trusts God's wisdom even when the conventional wisdom of the world is in conflict with what we see as God's wisdom, what the church tells us is God's wisdom, what the scriptures reveal as God's wisdom, what the commandments remind us of as God's wisdom. Sometimes common sense is common foolery. They caught a great number of fish and the nets were tearing and their boats were in danger of sinking. Simon is living in a miracle. It's fantastic. And all of a sudden he realizes no one has this kind of power over nature other than God. And so he's moved to call Jesus Lord, as St. Luke tells us. He sees God now. First he called Jesus Master, but now he knows Lord. Because of Adam's sin, humanity lost its power over nature. Before the sin, Adam was in harmony with everything because he was always consulting his father about how to take charge and take good care of all the living things on the planet. And we surely have lost that ability of control. We've, had, we've also lost our ability of self-control. We can't even control our human nature today. Yet Jesus is here 
who is the way, the truth, and the life. He wants to restore all things. Simon sees how truly needy he is because he sees the fix that humanity is in, especially in himself. Indeed, how needy is humanity? How needy am I? So Simon speaks now for all humanity. Depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I am unsalvageable. That's a lie. Jesus doesn't kick him out. He just says, Simon, do you trust me? Simon, do you trust me? Oh, Jesus, how we need to trust in you. Simon, don't be afraid. That's what he says next. Don't be afraid. Don't you know that, don't you know what you're looking at? You are seeing that I am. I am the great I am. I am your sin forgiver and reconciler. I am your good Samaritan who will raise up humanity to healing and hope. I am your bread of everlasting life in the Eucharist that you will receive. I am the one who says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Simon, do you trust me? Do you trust Jesus? Simon, do you trust me? I asked you to trust me with your livelihood in your boat. I asked you to trust me with my wisdom. I ask you now to trust me with mercy, for mercy. And now I want to ask you, would you trust me with your life? From now on, you and those far off, still in the future, will be in my net, the net of the great catch. Yes, Jesus, I can hear Simon saying, speaking for all of us, Yes, Jesus, I will trust in you because now I am wise enough to know that I can't always trust myself. But it's your wisdom that perdures. Resurrection, see, see, see,